So um, I'm Paulo, and I'm going to talk about composable applications with Ember. Uh, I'm, I knew like that most of you probably didn't work with Ember before, so I tried to make a, a talk that would use like new technolo technologies of Ember, but would also be generic enough so you could follow along. So as I said, I'm Paulo. I worked at Uniplaces for almost three years. I helped uh, with checking on the recipe, um, and now I'm working at uh, Truva. Um, so at Truva, we are like a community, a network of independent boutiques, um, and our mission is to bring the offline uh, experience of shopping at a boutique to the online independent uh, market. Um, so this is a slide of a boutique. You can see the Truva logo and a lot of products that you can buy. Mm -hmm. So everyone here hopefully knows what the single page application is. The, the, is there anyone that doesn't know? Because this would get really complicated after if you didn't know. So I'm going to talk about Ember. Probably all of you already see the Amster, but most specifically about single pages. So there has been a lot of talks about monolithic applications on the back end, but not many about the front end. And this starts to be a problem because a lot of the JavaScript code is being start being executed at the front end instead of the back end. And so you start to have actually monolithic single page applications. So you start by like adding an admin route, a blog route, for example, and etc. And it starts like being just so big. But single page applications have a lot of benefits. So it is a single code base, so you, it allows you to develop much faster. You have a single test suite, so it's you don't have to worry about different applications uh, transferring data between them to be able to actually test something or mock data between external apps. And it's so simple to build and to deploy. Like everything is given to you by Ember. Just like Joaquin, uh, Joaquin showed, uh, you just need to do Ember new and it will show everything you, you have and everything you need from the Ember side and ready to deploy. So there is some cons and this is going to be the talk I'm going to be giving. So as the team grows, and at 20 places we start to feel that, um, as the team grows it, it gets really hard to, to be able to, like, to keep the code um, being still fast. The build times start to, to, to get really slow and you start to have a lot of conflict because a lot of people are working on the same thing. Everything is loaded at boot time. So what happens as the single page application grows is that it gets just too big. And these can start to be laggy on the front end and on browsers, especially on mobile. So as I said, as the, the app gets bigger, the Ember application gets bigger. So like the registry, the, everything the app needs to boot and to run, it's going to get huge. And sometimes you have even memory leaks, so it, it, take, it takes a lot of memory. Yeah, and eventually it gets too big to scale. Like the build deploys, even running tests sometimes takes like 10 minutes, if, especially if you have acceptance tests. It just takes too long. So what can you do about it? And this is what like, I think everyone does in React, Vue, other frameworks that are not like really an old framework. So like, for example, Ember, I think Ember and Angular are the most similar ones in the sense that they are full-blown uh, engines and full-blown uh, um, frameworks. For example, React is more like you have to construct your own framework, right? So you will have multiple single page applications. So this is really common. So the example I showed before, and I'm going to show this example throughout the, um, throughout the presentation, uh, you have an admin route, a blog route, and uh, some other route. And, and this is fine. I mean, it will work. And it has a lot of benefits already. So the development is completely uh, distributed. So you can actually focus on what you need. And you can have multiple people working on different things, which makes it much easier, even the communication between them. So you can actually focus on the testing of a given, um, of a given single page application. The functionality, of course, and the boot time, it's much faster than a monolith solution because you only need to load what you need for that single page application instead of uh, loading everything together. Yeah, so now I'm going to talk about some cons about this. So you start to duplicate the code because it normally gets just too hard to have everything in the same way. So you start to replicate in all your applications. 
you start to have slow transition and flickers between the apps. So what is really common is when you, when you transition from one app to the other, you have a blank page. And this is really common when you have multiple spas. Um, and the vendor is actually, and this is a big thing, I believe, the vendor is just loaded so many times and sometimes even duplicated because you have the same dependencies on the different projects. So it gets just too big. And testing starts to be complex because you start to, be, you start to depend on multiple apps running together. As you have in, when you have an architecture of microservices, it's, it's the same problem. You, you need communication between the apps to actually know if they are working together instead of just by itself. So, as we mentioned already, Tom Dale a, long a, lot, a lot of times, um, Tom Dale actually made this question. So, as your front end grows, how do you maintain a cohesive experience without building a monolith? And Tom Dale straight away said engines. Ember engines. And why? Okay, so first, what are engines actually? So engines allow for multiple logical applications to be composed together into a single application from the user's perspective. So this means that it should be seamless. It should be completely seamless for the user, but in terms of development, everything completely separated. So how does Ember do this? So I have here a small graphic in which you can see that the idea is that you have a single host application, a Ember application, that will mount other applications. They are not applications, they are called engines. And there is a, sm a small difference between them. So like the difference between actually engines and applications is that engines do not boot itself, it needs a host application to run on, and also do not control the router. So the Ember host application is the one that will control the router. The engine, per se, will inject everything it needs on the host application. But why engines? So engines allow for, bo for both good things of both worlds. So it allows for distributed development, as we mentioned. It allows actually to lazy load if you want, because you, do, you might not even need to, lo to load, for example, the blog, as I was giving the example of admin and blog, you might only need to, to load admin, or you might even only need to, to load the blog, so it allows for that. It has clean boundaries, because with engines, you actually have defined interfaces to communicate between them, so you don't run into the problem of just allowing everything to happen. So they are, they are joined in, in one application, but they run isolated to a point where they are reusable. So imagine you have an engine that handles all the authentication. If you want to use that engine in any other project, ideally, you just need to install that package and it should work. It's just like mounting a, a virtual machine. It's the same concept. So, and engines fix this with vendor the duplication. What this means is if you know you have a package or an add-on that is, you need to run uh, in both engines, maybe you should have it in the host application. And in that case, you won't be uh, loading it. So when you load the engine, the engine won't have that package. So it will be much faster to load. Of course, it will have impact at boot time because you still have to load it first. So it's, it's a decision on, on your side while implementing. So, there are two main types of engines. So you have routable and routeless. Routable is they have a route and they execute at a given route. So for example, if you do slash admin, it will mount the engine on that route. Routeless is when you use a template and you just mount it in a template. Okay. So, there are two ways to distribute an engine. You can do an in-rep on or a standalone. Um, an in repo add on is an engine that you know you only gonna need on that project. So there is no need for you to share or to have to worry about anything else. It's as simple as it will run only on this project. And a standalone and a standalone um, add on, it's an Ember add on that um, is really complex. It will have an NPM package associated with it, a GitHub. It's it's really, really complex. And it's an Ember add on. So you can simply install the add-on in any Ember project. So, from, uh, from this point forward, I'm gonna be referring to a demo I did, and we'll have a host main, host main Ember app, you'll have a blog engine and admin engine. So, um, uh, the blog engine and the admin engine are mounted at the route slash blog and slash admin. 
if you can follow, you can follow along after. I have those uh, both repos uh, on my GitHub account at slash Montoya, so you, there you, you can check them out. But um, I'm, I think you can follow along with me. Um, so to use an Ember engine, actually in Ember, it's pretty straightforward. So you just create an Ember project. So Ember new engines demo will create a project. You sit into it and you install an engine. After that, Ember gives you everything you need to run engines. You really shouldn't need more. Um, mounting the engines in an application should be also straightforward. So um, for example, here, when I uh, mounted the two engines, you can see that at the router of Ember, I just say like to mount the admin engine, and from now on, I'm going to call it admin, and the same for the block. And in the application, I just have a link to admin and block. It's completely seamless. So when someone clicks on admin, it will load the, the admin engine at the slash admin. So there are two types of engines I mentioned, and to create an uh, in-repo add-on, there is an Ember CLI command for it. You just need to do Ember generate in-repo engine, and it should be generated. And the standalone engine. The standalone engine is something Ember, Ember CLI is still missing. They don't have a generator for engines, which would be Ember, Ember engine, blog engine would create one. But uh, they haven't made it yet. So you need to create an Ember add-on and then add the files you actually need. So this is a big difference, as you'll be able to see. So when you create an in-repo add-on and a standalone structure, like the in-repo add-on is really, really small. And this is the example of the admin engine. And you could see it had, it had only one couple byte. And the blog engine had a lot more at 44, I think. And it's mainly also because I had much more things on the blog side for the demo, just so for you to be able to see the engine actually being loaded and take some time and take some space. I just installed some plugins for it to, for it to occupy space. So actually, if you want to use lazy loading in engines, it's really, really straightforward. I mean, it is a flag that you can disable. And if, if it's enabled in this case, it will um, lazy load that engine. So it won't load everything it needs for the blog engine in this case. So this is where like, the things get more trickier, but I think it's still straightforward. So imagine the, um, the engine actually as a dependency that is running on the host application. Ember provides with that. So it's, it's again really simple. In the engine, you just say you have a need, in this case for the store service, and Ember will not boot the app until the host application defines that uh, service. So if you don't do this, it, it wouldn't work. Ember wouldn't boot even. Um, also, another important thing is how do you actually share components between, um, between the engines? And for that, it gives a little bit more work, but I, see, I, I do believe it's the, the correct way and the standard way to do it. So you actually have to move everything you need into an add-on, and then you are able to decide if you want to use it uh, as, a, as a dependency on the host application or on the, um, or on the engine. But uh, if you want to use it as a dependency for everything, you just have to put as a dependency on the engine, and the engine will load it uh, from the uh, host application. And uh, to install, like the in repo, uh, in the in repo engine doesn't actually need much, doesn't need anything to run because it's already built by Ember. It knows where to look for them. It's inside the host application. But if you want to add um, a standalone engine to your Ember project, you actually need to install the engine from wherever it is. In this case, I'm installing the blog engine that I created, and it's on npm. So if I I did this, and and it, it really did work. So now I'm going to show you a demo. So the, um, the demo is going to be really simple, because all I wanted was to actually show you the engines working. Mm -hmm. So this is the app loaded. This is running localhost. So, ah, sorry. Uh, Yeah, maybe it's it's better if I'm here. Okay, so here it's running on localhost. 
So it, it has a lot of things for debugging here that you wouldn't load in a Ember application in production. But uh, so I'm going to clear this up. So what you want, like what is going to happen now is as you are on this uh, on this engine's demo, when I click the blog, it's moot. It's running a completely separated separate project, and they are loaded here, as you can see. And they are only loaded when I click. And if I do the same for admin, it's again, and it's pretty smooth. And after that, it doesn't even load anything else. I can clear. Like it has everything it needs. And like everything is, everything can be kept in the host application. So if you have data that you already fetched, it makes no sense to fetch it again because you can just share it. And engines allow you to do this because you, when you mount the engine, you can actually pass the model from from the uh, from the application. So you, you really have access to everything. Um, I just wanted to show now you how easy it is actually to just switch the lazy loading off. So I just need to restart the app when you do this. And it'll take a few seconds. Mm -hmm. But um, so I'm switching the lazy loading to false in the admin engine, which means that the admin engine from now on won't be lazy loaded. It will be loaded at boot time. And the um, blog engine will still be lazy loaded. And the blog engine has exactly the same file, so you would have been just switching the same flight. It's just for the purpose of the demo. I think it's easier to show this. Uh, so if I clear now and I, show, I click the admin, you see nothing is loaded. It's already loaded. And the blog. It still does that. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward, and the good thing about Ember is that it is a so complex framework that they can take leverage of that, and they can improve in the ecosystem. And this is exactly what they did. So deploying the app plus the engine. So by default, Ember, when you deploy, will already build the engines, and um, and you really have to do nothing because Ember already. Uh, is aware of, of the fact that you have engines, so it will fetch them and it will have them locally uh, by a static file. But imagine that you don't want that. You really want the engines to be completely up to date and you want them to live in a different CDN. You can. You just change the CDN endpoint and it will work. So are engines production ready? So that's the main question that has been everyone talks about. And it's kind of. So it is already used in production by LinkedIn, and you've probably seen a big change in LinkedIn in like the recent, like the past year. It has changed a lot, and it was due to the engines. Uh, but it's it's under active development. There is still not a 1.0, and mainly because when Ember releases something, they want it to be perfect, and they still do, don't have, as I said before, the generator for the add-on, and there are some things that they are still missing, and like you can use them. I think it's pretty. I think it's safe, and LinkedIn has proved that. But uh, you should be aware that they are not production ready. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can check the code in um, my GitHub account. It's all there. I'll 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 put a readme there also, so you can follow along. Any anything I'll put the slides in also. Uh, and yeah, we are recruiting at Truva, so if you like these challenges, yeah, can talk about it. Yeah. I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, so that's a great question. <laughs> it's it is, but I think it's really tricky because, like, the way they work is what it's, it really also depends if it is a routeless or a route or a or a non routeless engine. Um, but I think I think it's possible, but it won't be like ad hoc. So it won't Ember won't. I think it will never provide you with that like as a given, so we'll have to do stuff. But uh, it is possible because like I didn't show, the, I showed the router here, yeah? so I can actually, I think I can show you, it's much easier. So the actual engine on the demo, and this is the, I think it's the trickier part. So, uh, uh, 
So here, this is actually exporting the build routes up. So here, if you'd import the engine, I think it should be possible and also would build the route. So it, it should be possible in theory, but I, I didn't try it. And uh, I actually haven't read anything about it also, because you can always, and the idea is always to separate the engines and they live isolated. But I think it's possible to try it out and it should work. It, it really should work. <laughs>